It's time for your Low Country Real Estate Market Update. It's the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Brian is one of the top 1% real estate agents in Charleston. Find him online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-400-8009. Now, broadcasting from the WTMA studios, here's your host, Brian Beatty. Good morning, Charleston, and welcome to another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on The Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. I'm your host, Brian Beatty, and gosh, 10 years I've been on this program, helping you better understand the real estate market, the trends within it, so that you become an informed consumer and you make informed decisions when it comes to buying, selling, or investing in real estate. So exciting show for you today. I'm actually joined in the studio this morning by Derek Goulet of Fairway Independent Mortgage. We're going to talk with him for probably at least half the show about what's happening on the mortgage side of real estate, mortgage side of the business. So we're going to have a lot of questions for him, uh, some personal questions that I want to ask, and then, of course, some questions that just we get asked routinely or that he gets asked routinely and tell, just kind of help you guys better understand what's happening on on that side of the equation. Good morning, Derek. Good morning, Brian. How are you today? Fantastic. So uh, we're going to cover that. We're going to cover what's happening in the market. There's some very interesting information that uh, is coming out. And it, I guess it depends on where you're looking for for data on the housing market. It seems like we're kind of in this interesting time in this in this market where one half of people think the market's going to go up or be okay. The other half is, you know, preaching doom and gloom, worst case scenarios. Um, and so we're going to talk through that. We're going to talk about what that means for us here in the Charleston, South Carolina real estate market. Um, and of course, if you guys ever have any questions, if you want to reach out to me, you want to have a private conversation about your interest in buying, selling, or investing in real estate, or maybe you own a home and you want to have it managed professionally by a property management company, then you know we'd love the opportunity to earn your business. I can be reached at 843-800-0065. That's 843-800-0065. Or you can always go to listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. A lot of great information on there. Uh, you can find out you know, how much your home is worth, search homes for sale, find out how many buyers we have for your home right now. We've got a really cool way of kind of searching through our database based on a location, price range, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, and it'll tell us how many folks within our active database of about 25,000 buyers uh, would be an actual fit for your home. So listingsincharleston.com is the website to go to, and we'll get to Derek's contact information in just a minute. But I just want to open this up because I get asked this question all the time, and it's such a you know, a, a common question that comes with such a ridiculously wide variety of answers. But, you know, how's the market or, or how's business? <laughs> well, you and I kind of talked a little bit about this earlier. So it's kind of, I say some days are good and some days aren't. Um, the markets today are just, I would say, wildly in tune with what's going on in interest rates and banking. And there is so much information out there that's coming out on a daily basis that's in influencing and fluctuating rates that, like I said, some days are good and some days aren't. And I think what's interesting about that is that, I mean, going back, let's go back to 2008, right? I think a lot of people, especially those that, like our listenership, as an example, when they go to buy or sell a home, it's not their first rodeo, right? Yep. The folks that listen to the show for the most part are higher income earners. You know, they're in the top echelon of, of income earners. They, they buy bigger, more expensive homes. Um, not to say that, you know, I mean, we work with everybody, right? Anybody that we think we can help, we work with. Um, but it just so happens that the listeners of the show, usually they're a little older. They've, they've been through this process a time or two before. But what I find really interesting is that this time around, I think that the, the cuts and the wounds from 2008 are still very fresh in oh. people's minds. Oh, yeah. And I think you have a lot of people that are almost like waiting for something like that to happen again to just validate their concerns or maybe their beliefs that we're, we're in for 2008 all over again. Uh, so they're being overly cautious. But what they're doing to prep for that is they're staying really in tune with what's happening in the market. And so I would say that today's consumer is considerably more educated, maybe because of the availability of data, uh, than they were maybe leading up to the crash of 2008. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yeah, that's that's a very accurate statement. So, and so, from your side of the business, um, because rates—I mean, rates change 
multiple times per day, right? It Especially depends. right now. <laughs> yeah, it depends on which way the wind is blowing is, is, is what's going to happen with interest rates at the moment. And so, um, you know, for those folks that are doing a lot of self-education right now and they're, and they're looking to either this show or they're looking on, you know, CNBC or Fox or wherever to go and get their information on what's happening in the, in the not just economically, but as that relates to the real estate market. Um, in your daily conversations with people, um, do, you f- do you find it harder to kind of educate folks on what's happening in the market? Or do you think that that has, has helped with those conversations? I think it's helped and hindered both at the same time. So the helping is that people come in and they, some people do know a lot. Some people think they know a lot, which is good, but that's where it also hinders you because sometimes when you think you know a lot, you're not always open to like what somebody's saying or suggesting or bringing a new idea to the table, if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. I mean, we deal with it a lot when it comes to the value of someone's home. I mean, over the past several years, the like Zillow's estimate for someone's home has become to them, you know, like the Bible. You know, it's it's that it is what it is, and so we have a tough time at times helping people understand what the true value of their home is and how we arrived at that number. I'm curious, you, do you deal with the same when it comes to like interest rates that they might see on you know, Lending Tree or Rocket Mortgage or just doing some sort of generic online search to figure out what interest rates are right now? Absolutely. And there is such a, a widespread right now um, within the rate market. Just, you know, there's in the mortgage world, we call it margin compression, which just means that a loan is not as valuable today as it was even six to eight months ago. And so either people work for less money or they charge more in points. It's kind of the, the short version of what margin compression means. Gotcha. And I, and I want to ask something in relation to that. Let's talk about points for a minute. Uh, you know, obviously, I know what points are. You know what points are. But for the just everyday listener, what are they? How much do they cost? How do you feel about them? Good, bad, or indifferent? Um, what's your take on that? So points are just a percentage of the loan amount for a consumer. So for easy math, if somebody's buying a $350,000 house and they're getting a $350,000 loan and they're paying one point to get it, they're paying $3,500 to purchase whatever interest rate it is they're getting. Does that answer that question? Yeah. The first part of it. So then, um, Good, bad, or indifferent is a good way to describe it. I would say that today points are way more valuable than they have been in the past. And what I mean by that is because loans are not as valuable overall as they used to be, points go a long way in the form of interest rate. So six, eight, 10 months ago, 1% of your loan amount, so that that $3,500 used to maybe get you between 0125 and 0.25 often rate, so a quarter often rate. Today, that that 1% is generally changing your interest rate by somewhere between 0.625 and 0.875. So the payback period on that is very short. I see you thinking over there. So what questions is that? No, I just, I, I, you know, I just, you know, I'm a big math guy. So you had mentioned that uh, mortgages are less valuable today than they have been in the past. I wonder if you could expand on that first and then I'll get to my second question. So what I mean by they're less valuable today is at the end of the day, you know, we have three big entities that buy these things, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Ginnie Mae. And they know that these loans aren't going to be on their books for very long based on forecasting and other macroeconomic factors. And so they say, hey, we're not going to pay you as much for that loan today because we know that it's not going to be sitting on our books for probably more than 12 to 24 months. Okay. And why it's such a short period of time for those loans to sit on their books as opposed to three, yeah. five, 10 years? Yeah. Historically, the average is like 7.87 years. That's just a, the rolling average lately. Um, again, going back to the word macroeconomic factors, there's enough macroeconomic factors that probably say that 
in the coming future we'll be in some sort of recession now before everyone like, oh gosh, recession. You said the R word. Uh oh. You heard it. Um, re- rec- the technical definition of recession is just two quarters of overall economic contraction. Doesn't mean the sky is falling. It doesn't mean it's 2008. And in fact, if we look at most recessionary periods, I actually sent you the chart. You could probably post it. Um, out of the last 80 years, 73 out of those 80 years, housing values have gone up even in recessions and recessions tend to lead to lower interest rates. So that's why Fannie, Freddie, Ginny are saying these loans won't be on our books for probably more than 24 months, the vast majority of them. So, and when you look, when you look at the, you know, just the macroeconomics, because you know, you've got a few different types of folks from my perspective in my industry, right? You have people that are just operators, right? They're transaction facilitators. You want to buy or sell a home? Great. I know how to buy, help someone buy and sell real estate and I can walk you through that process. Then you have people that really study the market and not just what's happening locally and and in the local economy, but they understand the bigger picture, right? They understand the trends. They understand the movement of money. They understand the overall thoughts and opinions of consumers and how that's impacting everything. And that's a learned skill. It's something that takes a long time to, to get the hang of because there's so much information to digest and absorb and, and truly understand. Um, and so for the folks that are really in tune with the market, when we sit down with them and we help them understand, not only here's what your home is worth, but here's why I would price it this way. And here's why I'm suggesting this strategy. And then they can pull bits and pieces from that, that knowledge base that they've built over time and in terms of what's happening economically, politically, how that's impacting the market, because real estate is a lagging indicator of the economy. So I'm curious when you say that there are enough indicators macroeconomically to believe we're heading into a recession, uh, if you could expand on that and then what you believe that might do to interest rates, say, over the next six to 12 months. So, I mean, one of the biggest factors that that most of the mortgage world looks at and I look at a lot is like jobs, both creations, job keeps. And if you look at the numbers that have been coming out, I'm going to pause right there and I'm going to also add inflation and I'll get back to that in a second. But so jobs numbers. So historically jobs numbers in healthy economies grow. And while the job creations numbers from January and February that have been released so far, at least on the surface, look like they've grown. They actually changed the way that they publish the data. Because if you look at the number of people that are unemployed, that grew. And you look at the number of people that have filed unemployment benefits, that grew. So what happened in in January and February is you have these seasonally adjusted jobs that normally come off the payrolls. And historically, January loses about 3 million of those seasonal workers that came off of payrolls from the Christmas holiday season. Well, this year, we only lost 2.5 million. So the the Bureau of Labor Statistics (laughs) came out and said, well, we normally lose 3 million, and this year we only lost 2.5 million, so 500,000 people kept their job or they were created. It's literally the first time in 20 years that they've changed the way that they look at that, that equation. All right. It's like them it's, changing how they, uh, you know, assess inflation. Yeah. Right. It's fuzzy math. <laughs> exactly. So going back to my whole thing about it, inflation. So the way that the Federal Reserve is looking at inflation is they're looking at it as a lagging indicator. So um, currently 43% of the housing number, the core CPI, which is what the Fed is looking at for their interest rate decisions over the next, you know, month, month over month basis. Um, housing makes up 43% of that. Well, the housing figure that they use is from 12 months ago. And 12 months ago, housing inflation was roughly 8.2%. And so if you take 43% of that number, it's around three. Whereas today, housing inflation is only 3%. And so if you literally just moved the, the, the mark of when they're looking at the housing inflation data, our core CPI would go from five and a half to three, which is almost in line with what the Fed is targeting for inflation. So inflation is probably- Which is two, right? Yeah. 
so inflation's probably pretty close to where the Fed actually wants it in reality, but they're looking at data that's so old that it's influencing decisions which lead to bigger economic issues, i.e. recession. Yeah, and that's and frankly, that's part of the problem with just the nature of data as it relates to real estate yep. because you have to understand the lag effect of the, of the data. You know, like as an example, I'm just I'm going to I'm going to point to this really quickly. There was an article that came out at the end uh, it was a few weeks ago. And it was from CNBC and it says home sales spike 14.5% in February as the median price drops for the first time in over a decade. And so these were the three main bullet points in this article. Bullet point number one is that sales of previously owned homes rose 14.5% in February compared to January. It was the first monthly gain in 12 months and the largest increase since July of 2020, just after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and higher mortgage rates have been cooling home prices since last summer. And for the first time in a record 131 consecutive months, nearly 11 years, prices were lower on a year-over-year comparison. So you look at that and you say, all right, well, whoa, maybe we might be turning a corner here. Um, well, what the article didn't mention is that February this, this year was actually almost... 25% lower than last February. And what they don't mention is that it was the worst February for home sales in the past 10 years. So there's always two sides to every coin. And that's part of the reason why I know that folks that listen to this show know how to read between the lines and not just take information from one particular data source. But um, you know, you've got all of these different data sets and, and factors that go into formulating people's opinion of the real estate market. Um, I want to take a break, but I want to just kind of tease what you think might be happening uh, in our local market here in the next, you know, really, let's, let's look ahead to like this summer. What, where do we think we're going to be? So I'm going to come back to you after we take a short break. And again, if you want to reach out to me, if you have some questions for me about the real estate market, about your interest in buying, selling, or investing in real estate, you can reach out to me at 843-800-0065. That's 843-800-0065. Or you can go online and look at our website, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. And Derek, how would folks reach you if they have any questions about mortgages? Best way to get in touch with me is my cell phone. It's area code 949-280-8044. Awesome. Stick around for more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show right here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Stay tuned for more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. 